Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Craft Supply. Is that not a beautiful project or what? I can't wait to get started. We're going to take a veg tan, dye it, we're going to cut through it, we're going to pick a beautiful liner leather that's going to show through as part of the decoration, set some beautiful clean quarter inch nickel spots, line 24 snaps, and this project is going to be a blast. As always, first place we're going to start, let's make our pattern. Nice, we are set up and ready to go. Now, a couple of things before we get started. We're going to use a one and a half inch wide cuff, which the, the square works perfectly. One inch, one and a half inch, our two most common sizes. But secondly, by going one and a half, uh, we don't, we're not going to have to break down into small fractions. But here's another point. We're going to start from scratch. We're not going to look at a sample, measure that, and then transfer that over to our pattern. And here's why. We're going to start from scratch because when you take your design or, or the, the vision you see in your mind, you're going to know exactly how to draw this out. Therefore, you can take this basic pattern and run with it. All right, so let's get started. First off, we're going to go one and a half inch wide. So one and a half inch on my square. Let's just drop in two parallel lines. Now, on one end, what I'm going to do, I can square. In fact, I'll put it right there so it's easy to see. I'm going to square across this top line, drop in a line. Easy enough. Well, you know what? While we're here, let's do this. Let's go ahead and center that. Mark it three quarters of an inch. Now, seven and a half inches. This is a place that's easy enough to make a mistake. Seven and a half is my snap to snap distance for my wrist, not end to end. We'll build our distance from the seven and a half for our end cuts. All right, so let's drop that line in at seven and a half. Perfect. All right. Like I said, same with the first. Let's drop in a three quarter inch mark. Easy enough. Now let's connect those. Good. We have our center line. Now let's get our center line from left to right. So seven and a half. Let's drop in three and three quarters. There's our center mark. Let's go ahead and circle that. Now from that point, we're going to drop in spots every one inch working out. So Squaring across that line, I'm going to drop in a mark at seven, eight, and nine. Here, five, four, and three. Now, let's circle these. Good pattern maintenance. We're going to mark these in red shortly because we mark and not punch those holes. But let's draw these in and snap. And it wouldn't hurt to put snap right here, just again so we keep our pattern clean and tight. Now, we're going to have a lot of lines on this and it's going to get a little confusing. So we're going to use those marks as our center mark on each line. All right. Now let's draw in our angles. We're going to use simply a template. Here's the thing. If you don't have a template, easy enough. I can take any piece of heavier paper. If I go one and one or two and two or however big I want to make it, let's go two and two. All right. There we go. Now I'm marked simply split that in half. We can cut that out and we have a template. All right, easiest thing though. Let's square across the bottom line of our paper. I'm going to leave a little paper hanging out so that I can see I'm parallel, but it's a thin line. Easy enough. Now let's drop this in because I need 45 degree lines leaning right and then leaning left. Here's the thing though. This is our pattern. I am not by nature patient and I rarely tend to take my time. Here's where I need to. And here's the thing though. We only have to make one pattern. From this pattern, we can make as many projects as we want. So on this, tedious, but let's take our time. So there we go. Let's mark that. I'm going to scoot my straight edge across here. Mark that. And the last. Now flip my square so I could work my template all the way down. Now let's flip that because we're going to go in the other direction. And again, let's just start right at that cross hatch. And the last mark there. Clean and easy. Everything is looking nice, clean and square. Now we're going to take this and we're going to mark each line eighth of an inch on either side. Now that's going to take a little time, but I'm going to work my way left and then right. I'll flip and mark the other side. But let's do this. Let's just go ahead and start so you can get an idea of what this is going to look like. So there's an eighth. We're going to mark again an eighth, and this is going to give us 
a quarter inch band. All right, let's jump over here. Let's drop in an eighth and flip that, drop in an eighth. Easy enough, nice clean and parallel, and I'm just eyeballing that, that's more than enough. This does not have to be spot on accurate. As clean as we can make it is good, but at the same time, if that's not exactly a quarter inch, once this is complete, we're the only ones that will see that. So there, that's what we're looking for, crosshatch. So I'm gonna work my way down and back, and we'll have our pattern all but ready. And coming in with our last line. Now, like I said, we've got a lot of lines on here, but we're gonna fill in our lines, our cut lines, with a black ink pen, make the whole thing very easy. But like I said, we need to be patient with this. If we are, we'll be thrilled with the outcome. All right, now we need a border. So let's go ahead and drop in a quarter inch border on this. Now, gonna square, nice. Now let's flip that around. Because a quarter inch border, now we can go a little bit thinner, but what's happening here is that because all of this is very clean and even, I'm just going to have two small cuts there to bring in these outside corners, all right? So, border is in, we're ready to go. Let's do this. I'm going to take a pen. Now, I'm going to draw in, again, a little bit tedious. We'll fast forward, though. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in my cut lines with an ink pen. Therefore, it's gonna make it very easy on our eyes to see where we need to cut. Therefore, we're not gonna make any major mistakes. And my last line, very nice. Well, that pattern looks great. So let's go ahead, drop in our outside marks. Nice. And other side, square to that edge. Very clean. Now, we're gonna add round ends to these and we're gonna use, we're gonna visually look at this when we punch those, but let's go ahead and at least drop in a round end on our pattern so again, we don't make a mistake. And now I'm simply just roughly squaring, roughly a one and a half inch bottle. So now we've got our end marks. Last thing we're gonna do here, let's, let's practice some good pattern maintenance. Now, for my punch holes, I'm going to mark those in black. But for my marking holes, I'm going to mark those in red so that my eye can easily see what needs to be punched and what needs to be marked. Good looking pattern. Now, one last thing before we jump over to cutting. Let's look at a couple of samples here. Now, we've got a three quarter inch diamond here. Well, we can bump that up to a larger diamond we can even go up to a one inch diamond, or if we're using a, a saddle bag, for my saddle bag pattern, this is a one and a quarter inch pattern. So you can work this larger for a larger project, but for the cuff, we're keeping this kind of tight and small, but great looking pattern. So now let's cut this out. And let's pop out that last piece. Well, that just looks spectacular. Very cool, we're getting there. Now, last thing we're gonna do here, Let's go ahead and cut out the main body. And our round ends, we're just, again, gonna eyeball those. Do not have to be perfect. The tool will make that perfect for us. Very nice. Well, that is a good looking pattern. Ready to go. Clean and tight. Now, let's trim that a little bit right there and we are ready to cut some leather. All right, so cutting our leather. First off, we're gonna use a four to five ounce veg tan for our exterior. Therefore, we can dye into the color of our choice. Now, here's, here's the thing though. Here's what you need to look out for. I don't wanna go much over five ounce leather. If I get too heavy, when I add my suede, my end result is gonna be a 10 to 11 ounce leather, and that's just gonna to be too thick. I want this comfortable on my wrist. Now, here's another thing though. I've cut my blank, ready to go, but I've cut this oversize. Here's the reason. I typically do not like to tape my patterns down to my leather because it always seems to leave a bit of adhesive there and that messes with my dye. But in this situation, I've overcut my blank, ample room. So when I hit that with a round end punch, it's gonna knock any problems right out. Now, what we're gonna do, this is gonna be tedious, but again, as always, 
If we take our time and we're patient with this, the outcome will be beautiful. So I'm gonna take my awl, I'm gonna mark each of my diamonds, then I'm gonna take my craft knife and I'm gonna cut each diamond out. Again, tedious, but the outcome will be beautiful. And our last cut, very nice, there we go. Now, is this absolutely perfect? No, it's not, this was not die cut, this is hand cut. So every band, not the same exact width of every other band, but it's still very clean. Now, once we get our backing on this, our die, our end punches and our snaps, it's gonna look great. You'll see every mistake, but no one else will. All right, let's go ahead and drop in with a revolving punch, our snap holes. Now, I pre-marked those straight from my pattern. Easy enough. Now, we're just about ready to die. So let's drop in our round end punches. Now, this is a one and a half inch strap, so we're gonna use a one and a half inch round end punch. Got my snap holes ready to go. I'm gonna back out about one inch. Now, I can certainly mark that if I'm not comfortable with eyeballing it, but the one thing I do wanna make sure of is that the wings on each side of that tool are even. Gives us a nice round end punch. So let's come down now to this end, about a one inch out, give or take. There we go. Boy, that looks great, doesn't it? All right, let's work towards adding some dye. We are set and ready to dye. Now this is easy enough. This is a small enough piece where we could certainly use a dauber, but I like to dip dye everything because this is gonna be so consistent it's gonna look like it was dyed at the tannery. Now, pro oil dye, that's what we're dipping with. I wouldn't necessarily suggest going with an alcohol dye because my colors are always gonna be dark. But we're gonna use a light brown on this. We're gonna pick a color for that backing and it will be beautiful. One quick thing though, as always with dyeing, I've got a plastic bag down to protect my tabletop and then inexpensive paper on that so my dye doesn't pool and give me problems. So, easy enough. Small little hook, you can make that out of just about anything. Coat hangers are great. Simply gonna run my cuff through, tap it against the edge a couple of times, set it down, and I'm going to walk away because that will be beautiful. Once this dries, gonna give it about an hour and a half, give or take. We're gonna work towards an atom wax, which is a great top coat. All right, so I've cleaned up our work area here. Now, we really didn't have much of a dye spill to begin with, but just to keep this tidy, I've changed out my paper. Also, oil dye, extremely easy to clean out of a plastic bin. So I've replaced my oil dye with a leather balm. Now this is our top coat or our finish. All I need to do is I'm gonna take a little bit on my rag. I'm gonna rub it on the project. Now I'm gonna go a little sparingly here. Rub that on. Now I'm gonna flip my rag over to a dry portion, just a simple cotton rag and I'm gonna to start to buff. Now I've got a lot of little lines here, so I don't wanna to go too heavy, but as I buff, that is gonna pick up a beautiful gloss, kind of a matte finish, but nonetheless. And it'll take a few minutes to dry. This will lighten a little bit, but that is just beautiful, coming along nicely. Now let's pick our backing. All right, so adding a liner, easy and hard. <laughs> Putting the liner on, easy. Our choices make it hard. Unbelievable amount of possibilities here. But we're gonna narrow that down just a little bit. We're gonna line this with a suede for three reasons. First off, suede, relatively inexpensive. Secondly, beautiful, vibrant colors. And third, that's gonna be a different texture. My top grain is smooth. My suede is gonna have a sky texture to it. It's gonna give that a nice opposition. Here's the hard part. We've got 21 beautiful colors in suede alone. I've pulled out five. We're gonna lay this on that, see which one we like the best. Well, of course, that just pops. That is a beautiful combination. Blue, that's my all-time favorite. A nice medium brown with a rich blue behind it. The lavender, it's just as cute as it can be. Forest green, almost an old world, very classic look, but because this just seems to pop, let's go with a turquoise. Won't that be gorgeous? But let's, since we've made it this far, let's go ahead and drop in a couple of spots. We're gonna drop in nickel spots on our crosshatch. Let's take a look and see how that is. Well, that is absolutely going to pop. Can't wait to get this finished. 
All right, so I've got a setup over here to add our liner, relatively easy. Let's go to that next. Nice, we are set up and ready to go. Suede backing, our main body. Now, save a little time, I've dropped in an ink line on our suede. We're gonna trim that off, that's no issue, and, and suede is always tough to mark. But strangely enough, this is the easiest part of it. Now, glue-wise, I love the Leathercraft cement. It's a great glue, gives you a good bond, but it's water-based. Now, with a cuff, we may deal with sweat, we may deal with rain, and I don't want my glue giving out, so we're gonna go with a contact cement. Here's the problem, though. We're gonna need the contact cement on both pieces. Easy enough. With the suede, I'm simply gonna run my finger across that. Let's drop that into our ink line. Press the suede down. And there's our pattern. Easy enough, right? All right, on our main body, on our outside band, I want glue right to the edge. On these cross bands, I just need a little glue in the center, just enough to adhere. On my backing, I want to bring that glue over my ink line. That way I can see all the way around that I've got a good edge. On the cross bands, same as here. I just need a little in the middle, all right? So let's drop in some contact cement with an old paintbrush because whatever we use here is going to have to go in the trash. I can wrap that in cellophane, but it won't last long. So I find the worst paintbrush in my paintbrush jar and we'll simply use that to apply our contact cement. Nice, so we've given that about 10 minutes to dry. Looks like a mess, but it's not going to here shortly. Let's take our, our main body. We're gonna lay that right into our blue line. Press that down. Looks great. Glue only where we want it. Now, here's a little bit of a trick. If you do get a little glue in here with suede, you can take your craft knife and scrape that out, and that will go unnoticed. But also, too, you'll notice we're going to add our hardware, our spots, after we put in our lining. There's two reasons for this. First off, if I ever have to replace a spot or a piece of hardware, I'm not going to have to dig the tines out of the liner. I can simply drop it out. But secondly, like say with a, a laptop or a briefcase, with my straps, I can reverse those straps for someone that wants to carry that on the other side. So our hardware, typically for me, is going to go in last. All right, looks great, let's trim. All right, trimming our edge, easy enough. Now press this down so I've got a good glue along the edge. Typically, I would take my knife and use the body as my straight edge. As long as I keep my blade angle good and low, I'll get a nice clean cut. But if you're not comfortable with that, let's simply drop in a straight edge and trim both sides. And our last cut, there we go. Now. Perfect, look at that. That looks like it was die cut and we do not have a single air pocket. Now let's step over here and do our round end punch. Now again, one and a half, we've already made the punch on our main body. So what's gonna happen is this is just gonna sit down clean and easy. Now we'll trim that off. But look at that nice round clean end punch. Again, that looks just like it was die cut. Beautiful. All right, let's trim this last little piece off. Good. And last thing, let's go ahead and repunch our snap holes because we need to punch through that suede. Now, we need to set a snap. We're a little too thick for a line 20, so let's bump up to a line 24 because we're at about a seven ounce, give or take. So let's set a line 24 snap. This is a simple, durable snap to set, easy enough. Now I'm going to take, take the post with a cap on it and I'm gonna come through from the front. Now with some exceptions though, your cap is always going to face the front or the face of the leather. Now I've got an anvil here, four different sizes, but I'm gonna drop that on a little leather just so I don't ding my marble. Now let's drop in this. If I get the two female flanges reversed, it's not gonna be a big issue but this is the standard way to set this. Simply drop that post in, two good shots, very clean. Now, I wanna set that just hard enough to where it's not gonna spin. I don't wanna hit it too hard. Now, let's jump over here with this piece. Now, for a cuff, we're gonna come in from the back because this, if, if we're setting a keychain, then what we're gonna do is we'll have to set him from the front so it will come together like this. 
but right now we want that to circle around. So post up, second female piece. We're gonna drop that in, but I'm going to drop this flat on my marble because I want that flush. So drop in the other piece, set our setter in, two good shots, clean, and you can see that post has rolled down in there nicely. So snaps are set, and one last step here. We are going to set some spots, but isn't that beautiful? Looking great. All right, so our last touch to this beautiful cuff, we're gonna set spots. Now, we've got a machine called the Little Wonder. We not only sell it, we make it in-house. But here's the thing, with the Little Wonder, it is gonna set a number of things straight each time, every time, very clean, very easy. But for us crafters, we may not be setting a lot of, lot of spots or grommets or eyelets. So, this is a great tool, simply a spot setter. Now, this is designated per size. This is a quarter inch. But what I'm going to do is notice I can load a spot into this sleeve, press that down to where it's flush, my tines are flush. I'm going to drop the concaved end of this tool right up against the spot and set that. Now, notice, yeah, it sticks, and we'll, that's our second trick, but notice, very clean, very flush. So I can simply bend this over, or turn this over, drop him in from the other side, and there we go, set my tines, clean and tight. Great tool, but here's the problem. We're gonna be hitting a very thin line here, and that's gonna be tough to line that up. Everything on this is very symmetrical. If my, my spots are squirrely across here, it's gonna stick out like a sore thumb. So what I need to do, literally, is set these spots by hand. A Lot of control here. Five steps, easy enough, but you'll see where I'm going with each step and they all make sense. Now, first thing, I need to mark my leather. So I'm gonna take one of my spots and I'm simply gonna press the tines in where I want it. Now, I don't know if the camera's gonna pick that up, but here's the easiest thing. Got my two tine marks. This is simply a pallet of cardboard. Therefore, I can take my craft knife and I can run through my leather into my cardboard and it's not gonna ding my point. So I can see my two spots, my two tines. I'm gonna press my craft knife in, clean and easy. Now, let's drop our spot in. We can see it and hold on to it. These little spots are tough. There we go, gonna press that through. Now, I don't really need to worry about pushing it through flush. It's gonna be a little tough on my fingers, but on this pad, simply gonna tap it. Beautiful, very clean. Now I'll flip this over. With the end of my craft knife, I've got my two tines sticking out. I'm simply gonna bend those in. And the last thing, and this is most important, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna put it on something hard, right here, my marble slab. I'm gonna take this, put it on my, on my spot, and just give it a good pop. What I've done is now I can feel those two tines have actually sunk in. They're very flat, very flush, and they're not gonna snag on anything. So I'm going to drop in a spot at each intersection and we will be done with this beautiful cuff. Nice, set that last spot and that is gorgeous. Did that not come out nicely? Is it absolutely perfect? No, I've got a thin line here, here, and here but who's gonna see that other than me? Here's a great thing, we've set these spots by hand and I mentioned we have great control with that. Let's look down that line of spots. Could that not be cleaner? Well, that's a great project and that is just gorgeous. And a lot of fun too, with a beautiful outcome. Here's a great part about this. That crosshatch design, one of an unlimited amount of cutout possibilities. Just one color in dye, one color in hardware, one type of backing leather. Sky is a limit. Time to get creative. I hope you make some beautiful cuffs. Good luck with your projects.